Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and this is the 2025 Surface Laptop 13. It's a Copilot Plus PC and this is sort of in addition to what they had before. This one comes in at 899, goes up to 999 and starts with 16 gigs of RAM. You can get 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage. If we flip it over here, you can see this is the first edition. It says Snapdragon X Plus CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage in Platinum. So it does come in that violet color and ocean as well. Let's go ahead and unbox it and we'll compare it with the other colors in a moment. Let's open it up here and see what we've got. This is my first time seeing it as well. So we'll open it up here and this is kind of your standard neutral color. Let's take this out of the box here. We'll set this aside just for a moment and see what we've got. So we've got a little bit of paperwork and probably a quick start guide here that goes over what the ports are for, those sorts of things. And of course, a little warranty guide as well. Inside here, we also get a USB-C to USB-C cable, and we also have a charger. Now, unlike the new Surface Pro, it comes with a charger, and this reminds me of one of Apple's chargers. I don't know that I've seen a Microsoft charger like this. So it slides in like that, clicks into place, and let's take this cover off it. There we go. And it's USB-C. So you can see that here. And as far as the overall specs, we'll zoom in right there and you can see what we have. 45 watts USB. So USB PD surface charger, and that comes with it. So that's great to see again, unlike the surface pro, we at least get a charger with it. Let's go ahead and close this up and take a closer look at the new laptop. So we'll set that aside right there and let's open this up. We'll pull back the covering. Let's see if we can get this here all in one piece. There we go. And here is the laptop itself. So let's set this aside. As I mentioned before, it has the Snapdragon X Plus CPU, and let's take a look around the outside edge. So on the left-hand side, we have USB-A with a headphone jack here, which is nice to see. On the other side, we have two USB-C ports. These are 3.2 ports though, not 4.0, and then it looks like nothing else. So we've got a nice rubberized texture on the back here, some feet on the bottom that are rubberized, and let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. So we'll open up the laptop itself. It turns on automatically, and then you can see your typical Surface keyboard. So we'll give it a moment to start up and let's see what we've got here. Now, as it's booting up, let's talk about the overall weight and some of the specs. So this is Microsoft's thinnest and lightest Surface laptop. It's anodized aluminum, has 100% recycled cobalt in the battery cells, and comes in at 2.7 pounds or 1.22 kilograms. So let's go ahead and take a look at this display. Now, as far as the display goes, it is fairly reflective as you can see here, and it is a 13 inch pixel sense display. It has a resolution of basically close to 1080p, 1920 by 1280 at 178 pixels per inch. It's a 60 Hertz display as well. So no OLED here, like we have some options in some of the other devices. It's sRGB and color calibrated from the factory, 400 nits, and there's no mention of Gorilla Glass. It also supports up to two 4K 60 Hertz displays using the ports here on the side. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we'll go ahead and continue in English and get this set up. And then it says, is this the right keyboard layout? We'll click yes. Do you want to add a second keyboard? We'll skip that. It says, let's connect to a network. We'll do that. Now it's checking for updates, which it will probably find at this point. Now it says getting things ready for you. Let's quickly compare it to the last year's Surface laptop where we have this nice blue color. So you can see that here, and this gives you an idea of the overall size. So you can go a little bit smaller if you need something a little less powerful, but less expensive as well, gives you an idea of the overall size. So on the side here, comparatively, of course, we're lacking a couple ports on one side, but at least we still have the headphone jack. And if we flip it over here, you'll see that we don't have the surface connector, but we just have USB-C. So at least they've given us the extra USB-A adapter and overall thickness is a little bit different as well. So you can see the thickness here. So let's sort of line them up back to back and you can see the thickness. So back to back thickness wise, they're very similar and it looks a little bit different with the 
last generation or the newer surface laptop that's larger where it tapers down where this one just sort of has the same look all the way across. Now, as far as compared to the new surface pro that I unboxed the other day, you can see that here in violet. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like next to platinum. So if you've been trying to decide the overall colors and size, this is the new lineup that we have here. Let's open it back up and I've got it backward because it doesn't taper. It's hard to tell that a little bit. So we'll open it up here a little bit tricky to open as well. Now it does appear that it has a camera here as well. I've seen some other reviews that say it does not. We'll definitely check that out in a moment, but you'll see it's installing some updates. So it says, please keep your computer on. I'll go ahead and plug it in as well, just to make sure it stays charged. Now we have to accept the license agreement. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can name the device. So we can say surface 13 tap next. Then it says just a moment. Now it's saying we're getting the latest features ready for you. So it's going to update the overall laptop, install everything. And this took me a while with the surface pro. So maybe 15 to 30 minutes. So I'll let this run complete and then we'll continue. Now it says unlock your free PC essentials. We'll go ahead and sign in and get everything prepared here. So we'll add my Microsoft account. Now it says, do you want to use your fingerprint to sign in faster and more securely? We'll go ahead and say, yes, set it up. And it says, touch the power button. So this is also the fingerprint reader. You'll see here. So we have fingerprint, but maybe no windows. Hello. I've seen that elsewhere, but it does look like we actually have a camera there or some sort of sensor. Maybe it's just the ambient light sensor. So looks like we don't have windows. Hello, but we'll check that with the camera settings in a moment. And it says now set up a pin. Now we can choose the privacy settings. I'll just go ahead and click next. Of course you can change this to whatever you'd like. Then we can include things such as inking and typing. We'll click accept. Again, this is a touch screen, so we can do it that way as well. And now we can restore from a backup. I'll restore from the surface. I did the unboxing on the other day. We'll click continue and get everything restored. So it will restore the folders, apps, settings, and credentials. So again, we'll give it just a moment here. It's restoring from backup and it says getting things ready for you. This actually can take a little bit. So we'll give it a moment and wait for it to complete. Now it says, let's customize your experience. So we can select, we want maybe gaming, maybe some creativity, maybe some business, and then we'll click accept. You could skip this altogether though. Now it says, use your phone from your PC. I'll skip that for now, but you can do that later if you want to. And also we should be able to set up some photos here as well, but we can skip backing up photos for now. You can again do that later. And then it says, always have access to your recent browsing. You don't have to allow it, but you can allow it for things such as edge. Now we'll decline. I don't use Microsoft 365 and then we'll click next. And it says, unlock your photographic memory with recall. And then we'll say, yes, save. We don't have to do that. We can turn it off and we can check it out later. So now we're ready to go here. It says, let's finish getting recall ready. This was a feature that was delayed a little bit, but you can see it here. Let's get this off the screen. And it just goes over how you can unlock with recall. So we can scan our finger here and then sign in with windows. Hello. So it says, there we go. There's the recall animation. So maybe we messed something up. We can then jump back in time. If you're not comfortable with this, just turn it off altogether though. Let's go ahead and close that out. And you can see this is a default wallpaper. I didn't set this or anything. And let's wait for everything to finish installing in the background. Now I've got the main things installed. Let's go ahead and first open up Geekbench. So with Geekbench installed, I showed this in the Surface Pro update with the Surface Pro 12. We'll load this and then we'll run Geekbench, see what it's like. We'll check the heat of the device, see what the keyboard is like, see if it's backlit and so on. So we'll go ahead and click later here and we'll run a CPU benchmark. We'll let it run and let's see what we get. Benchmarks completed and we have 2,252 for single core, 10,068 for multi-core. This is a little bit better than I got with the Surface Pro and that's probably because we have some fans here to help keep things a little bit cooler. Let's take a look at that though with the thermal camera and see what we've got. So I have a thermal camera here and you can see the overall signature of the laptop. So if we take a look at the hottest point right there, we have about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll place Celsius in the upper right. And after it calibrates, sometimes it drops a little bit, but basically we'll say 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that gives you an idea of what the overall signature looks like. And as far as the temperature on the back of it, if we close this, unplug it, feel the back 
it's not that warm at all. So this would be fine on your lap. No real issues. Let's take a look again with the thermal camera and you can see here is the hot point. And again, it's around a hundred degrees, 101 degrees. It's warm to the touch, but it's not hot. So that's sort of key for using. This as a laptop on your lap. No real issues there. Now, as far as the speakers, let's go ahead and take a listen to those and see what they're like. So one other thing to know is it doesn't appear that this is a camera. We have a touch sensor here and then we can log in. So it's nice and fast, but no windows. Hello here. Now I wanted to listen to the speakers, see what they sound like since the surface pro is surprisingly good. I've got a decibel meter here. We'll just place here and then we'll of course go through the volume ranges and see what it sounds like. So let's take a listen. The overall sound is decent. It's not as bassy as maybe the Surface Pro, at least from what I'm listening to here. At its highest volume, it's around 90 decibels or so. It does get a little bit distorted, feels very or sounds very tinny, and doesn't have great bass, but it's definitely usable. Of course, you have a headphone jack. You could use it with wireless earbuds, but it's okay. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's not great either. When it comes to the overall keyboard, well, the keyboard is what you would expect from a Surface. So if we go maybe into Notepad here, Let's go ahead and type, this is the new Surface laptop, and take a listen from the microphone directly. So that gives you an idea of what it sounds like, and the overall trackpad does have a good amount of feedback. As far as backlighting, we do have that as well. So let's go ahead and turn off the lights here. So we'll turn off the lights and you'll see that we have a backlight here. So of course we have our brightness. We can turn the backlight up or down. Just press the button there and turn the screen brightness down as well. So if we turn that down, you can see we have that backlit keyboard with multiple options for brightness. So it's nice to have that option. So we'll go ahead and close this out and that gives you an idea of the laptop itself. So again, if I go into something such as camera, we can go into the camera app and let it access the microphone and capture from the camera. And there is one, but it's not for Windows Hello. So that's the odd thing where we do have a camera we could use for Zoom calls, but not for things such as Windows Hello. That's limited to the fingerprint sensor. So if we press it here, we can go right in. And then we have this front facing camera, which does an okay job of capturing what's around me and would be great for maybe different phone calls or just using it to record. The overall microphones generally are pretty good as well. As far as the display in PWM, because these are LCDs, just like the Surface Pro, there is no PWM or anything, so you shouldn't feel nauseated or anything like that. That's a good sign for those of you that are sensitive to that. We do have Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. And as far as the battery life, we have up to 23 hours of video playback, 16 hours of active web usage, and then it supports 65 watt fast charging. So it does have that included charger. You could use a little bit more power and you would still max out at 65 watts. Now, if we unlock this, I did want to mention a couple other things. In my Surface Pro video, I tested things such as games. And while I could run City Skylines on here natively, I don't think you really want to do that. I wouldn't purchase this for games itself. If we go to Xbox, for example, and it's still loading. The overall experience with Xbox is it's just generally slow. However, if you wanted to use this for Copilot, you wanted to use it for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, it's perfect as a work laptop. So you could ask questions, use Copilot for that. If we again go back into Xbox, it just seems to take forever for whatever reason. There's definite issues with it. And if we go to maybe our speaker options here for Xbox, it will play cloud games, but I again would not recommend it. It would not load things such as the finals for me, but it would load things such as ARM designed apps such as Figma. So if we go into Figma, so if we go into what I was in before, I showed this in a different video, but if we grab maybe this, you can see it works pretty fast. No real issues here. We can move things around, resize them, select. So we'll resize here or try. 
There we go. Of course, you could use the trackpad and mouse as well, but this gives you an idea that it seems to work just fine, but it is designed for ARM. It will run apps that are not designed for ARM, but they run okay. They don't run incredibly well, especially games. I wasn't able to get things such as Call of Duty working on here, the finals. I was able to pl play Forza Motorsport Horizon or Forza Horizon using Xbox's cloud streaming, and you could play City Skylines natively. So things like Fortnite might run okay, but in general, I would probably probably just save this for maybe work or something else. If you wanted a gaming PC, I may opt for something with a different processor in it than an ARM processor and maybe get an RTX based Nvidia card, maybe a 5060 or a 5090, something along those lines, depending on what you want to do. So gaming of course is going to be a different experience, but for work, I think this would be great doing Excel spreadsheets, going into things such as word, it should work just fine. So opening this for the first time, of course, it's Word like you would expect. This is Word on the Microsoft Surface Laptop 13. And so this gives you an idea of what you could use it for. I think this is more focused for a student, something along those lines. However, around $1,000 it's hard to say if this would be a good buy compared to what else is out there. I probably would opt for the Surface Elite processors. So the processors in that are definitely a little bit faster and you'll get decent battery life in this. But again, it's sort of saved because it's not as powerful when it comes to regular windows apps. But let me know what you think of the surface laptop 13 in the comments below. I do like the larger size of the previous generation that was introduced last year. And I think this is a good buy for a student, especially on discount, but I would probably opt for the little bit more expensive one just to have a little bit extra. And maybe the same is true with the surface pro with replaceable storage and more. Let me know what you think of this laptop in the comments below. I don't like how it opens up here though. That's a little bit difficult. And I do really think it should have windows. Hello with the camera, but it just doesn't again. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And if you want to know anything else about it, let me know there as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.